Andrews Hour. Welcome to very dear friends, Steve Lawrence and Angela Lansing. TV, you know. don't have to be nervous. You mustn't worry about a thing, Angela. We're all going to make you both feel perfectly at home. Well, I that, that's true. I've been here before. Of course, my wife was on the show just a couple of weeks ago. Oh, was she nervous? I'll ask her as soon as she gets out of the sanitarium. <laughs> No. See, Edie had a marvelous time. She sure did. You got nothing to worry about, Angela. Just relax. See? You'll have a perfect time. Yes. Don't worry about the <laughs> Edie. <Edith. laughs> there, there. I'll, I'll be right here to claim your body. <laughs> Richard, will you stop that? Stop what? We only just be <laughs> We'll be back in one minute. Yes. It'll only hurt for an hour. <laughs> Anybody you want to be From Humphrey Bogart, Edward James Or Charlie Chaplin, or W.C. An actor's life for me Well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I I am the captain of the pinnacle And a right good captain, too You're very, very good and be it understood I command the right good Good and be it understood, he commands the right good crew. That language or abuse, I 
never, never use whatever the emergency. I am never known to quail at the fury of a gale. And I'm never, never sick at sea. What, never? No, never. What, never? Well, hardly ever. be real nice without your wife and your mother-in-law around. <laughs> Grace? Yeah, he's out the back. We'll call him out for you. Hey, Grace! Come on! Out. <laughs> oh, Joe. Oh, hi, Mr. Donahue. <laughs> what are you drinking, Grace? Well, give me some scotch, some bourbon, and some Burn a dog lap to put a lump of butter in the bottom. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Put a lump of butter in the bottom. Yeah. Ain't that fattening? I don't know. I always pass out before I get to it. <laughs> oh, you're a daisy. Yeah. Yeah. How's the world treating you, Grace? Terrible. I got kicked out of my apartment. I don't have any money to get back in. <laughs> then you, my friend, yeah. are on the horns of a dilemma. No, I'm not. I'm in the back seat of a stolen Buick. <laughs> yeah. Grace, 
Yeah. Why don't you sing us a real pretty song, huh? Yeah, Joe. Okay. <laughs> Help me. I mean, I still think I got the voice of a nightingale and the throat of a swallow. If I had a rock, I could kill two birds with one stone. Mm. Listen, you know, when I sing, I make Sinatra look sick. When you sing, you make Sinatra feel sick. Mm. And I think I turned on Eddie Gorm to marry an Indian. You know, when I go out with other girls, I used to go with them. They used to wear lipstick. And she uses war paint. Uh, I wouldn't talk about uh, Indians. It's not easy being married to an Italian. All my friends had a wedding cake, and I had to blow out the candles on a pepperoni pizza. That's uh, not funny. A good Italian wouldn't go to bed without his pizza. A smart Italian would rather have a girl. That's not funny either. I know. I didn't write it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look, Cher, we've been on here for 50 years now. Let's not argue. Let's do a song, okay? okay. All right. <laughs> Hey, 
Julie, that's a terrific looking gorilla suit you got there. Hey, really, Nate, a... I'm not in there. No, it must be Rich. Oh. No, 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 it's not me. It must be Angela. Oh, oh no, it's not me. Hey, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's get panicky now. If I'm not in there and you're not in there and you're not in there and she's not in there. You mean? Feet, get me out of here. <laughs> who is one of the foremost exponents of an exciting musical form known as bossa nova. With ten fingers and six strings, he manages to play the melody, the harmony, and the rhythm. Ladies and gentlemen, the ten fingers and six strings of Louis Bonfa. Creativity and, and your thrilling new concepts filled with so many, um, oh, contradictions and juxtapositions. Uh, what am I trying to say? What, what Julie is trying to say is that you're a gas. Yes. 
<laughs> Louis says thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Your 
have been talking about Broadway musicals and our experiences <laughs> in Broadway musicals all week. It's just been one story after another. It's Julia, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to again. interrupt yeah. you. I, there's one story I, I didn't tell you, and I think both you ladies will very well appreciate this. First of all, being ladies and being on Broadway. I was in What Makes Sammy Run in 1965, and you know how something, the unexpected, always happens in a show, and you're mm. not quite prepared for it. I was doing a scene with uh, another guy, and his cue line was, uh, well, you better not be around the studio when I get back. And Sally Ann House was making her entrance, and I had my back physically towards her, so I didn't see her making her entrance from the wings. And uh, he said to me, his cue line, you better not be here when I get back. And a look of horror came on his face. And naturally, I didn't know what was going on because my, my back is towards where Sally Ann is supposed to be coming on. And he looked at me and said, and another thing. I said, another thing? That's not in the script. What's he saying another thing for? He said, uh, you know, I've been watching you all week. Now it dawned on me that Sally Ann did not make her entrance. Something was, was very wrong. So I did a quick Cary Grant. I said, oh yeah? <laughs> you know, under pressure, I really come up with it. Oh yeah, it was a great I'd live, you know. So I said, uh, oh yeah? <laughs> and he said, uh, and another thing, you better not be here when I get back. And he walked off and left me alone. <laughs> now, I'm alone on stage, and I looked in the wings, and the stage manager said to me, Sally Ann is locked in the dressing room. <laughs> now, I must say, for those of you that are not familiar with the backstage at Broadway, you know the, the, uh, the dressing room doors are made of steel. They have to be fireproof. So she was locked in the dressing room door, and he said, It'll take us ten minutes to chop her out. <laughs> so I said, You're kidding. And I said, well, uh, and uh, I didn't know what, I, whist I started whistling the score. I, st I was whistling South Pacific. I was whistling every, I was whistling every, every music song I've ever heard in my life. And then finally, I said, well, I'm not going to just hang there like an idiot. You know, they're either going to drop the curtain or I finally stepped out of character, went right to the footlights, and I said, folks, you're probably wondering what's going on. Oh, and I great. told them what happened. That's I said, great. Sally Ann was locked in the dressing room, and I went into my nightclub act. I started doing jokes and singing all kinds of songs, and it was hysterical. It really brought the house down. Ten minutes later, they had chopped poor Sally Ann out of the dressing room, and she came out and said, it's all right. I said, forget it, I'm a hit without you. Who needs you? <laughs> It's all about, uh, you know, uh, people not coming on stage. I had one of those when I was in The Boyfriend, and I ha was standing on stage. Um, for, I did what your friend did. Uh, I was standing on stage, and the leading man and myself were about to embrace and kiss, and we're getting closer and closer, and the French maid was supposed to come on and say, Oh, ma'am, so funny, you know, and so on and so forth, and no French maid, and we're getting closer and closer, and I said, well, I have to go now, and I left him standing there. And then, from way, way away, there was this terrible thunder of footsteps as the French maid realized she was off and came shooting down the stairs and arrived on stage rather quickly. I'm surprised my mother didn't come on stage. <laughs> well, tell me, the lovely thing is that the first time I met uh, Julie was backstage at The Boyfriend because my mum played Lady Brocklehurst with Julie when she first came to New York and made her initial lovely starring success in The Boyfriend. And, and she uh, used to never talk about that. you before, before we met Angie. Did she yes, really? Yes, she used to say, you must meet my daughter. Ah, oh, well, that's lovely. I'm sure she's watching tonight and she'll be thrilled that you and I are sitting here having a cup of tea together. She was <laughs> the pretty... Is she still as pretty? She's as beautiful as ever. Mm. Very happy to tell you. Very proud of her. <laughs> she was a darling. She really was. She was a uh, boyfriend with me. You know, you know, one of the, the things I think that people don't realize about uh, Broadway shows, uh, some music that uh, some of the great songs that we have all sung at some yeah. one point or another in our careers, some of the songs came from shows that never ran. Like one of the great examples was uh, Rogers and Hart had so many great songs that were My Funny Valentine and uh, out of Jumbo. You uh, mean that was not in Jumbo? It was, no, it was written for the New York version. They cut it out and the, they wrote it at the last minute. Uh, oh, uh, uh, was, I'm sorry, no, a Funny Valentine was from uh, Babes in Arms. They Arm. wrote that at the last minute for the show. They cut out some other songs and so many things just get cut out. Oh, there was one song uh, that was cut from My Fair Lady, which was a beautiful song. It was my song and I was mad that they cut it, but it was as well that they did. It was a song that Eliza sang to the uh, staff to the servants of uh, Higgins' household the night before she went to the Grand Ball. And, uh, oh, long before we got to Broadway, it was cut, but I did sing it for a while. And then later, when Lena and Lowe wrote Gigi, they uh, used the song in Gigi, and it fitted beautifully in, in, into the film. Which song was that? Well, I'll sing it for you. Just picture Eliza, very nervous, and uh, talking to the servants. 
because I enjoyed singing it so much, but at least I had a little crack at it before, uh, before we came to Broadway. You know, the, Jerry Herman wrote some marvelous music for Dear World. Yeah. Uh, I don't think very much of that music was cut before it got to Broadway. There's well, one... yes, there was a couple of songs, yes? actually. One marvelous song called Through the Bottom of the Glass, but he wrote another song, which was just a beautiful song called I Don't Want to Know, mm. which was in the New York production. Chris. It was my favorite, oh, favorite number. Please. Sing it, Angie. Do sing it. Well, I'd love to, but I think it needs a little explaining, because after all, Dear World was the, uh, the world of Aurelia, the mad woman of Chaillot, who is this wonderful 80-year-old woman that I've played in the show. And uh, she, she loved the world, and she loved nature, and she loved people. And one day, the day arrives when her friends explain to her that the world isn't the lovely place that she thinks it is, and that the bulldozers are going to destroy these glorious buildings of Paris, and that automation is taking over the world. She just literally puts her hands over her ears and says, I, I, don't, I don't want to hear this, don't tell me, I want to remember the world as it is. And that's when she sings, I don't want to know. So maybe I could uh, uh, sing. have a little lovely Nelson Riddle accompaniment here. Yeah. <laughs> if music is no longer lovely, if laughter is no longer lilting, if lovers are no longer loving, then I don't want to know if summer is no longer carefree, if children are no longer singing, if people are no longer happy, then I don't want to know. Let me hide every truth from my eyes with the back of my hand. Let me live in a world full of lies with my head in the sand all my memories all are exciting my memories all are enchanted my memories burn in my head with a steady glow so if my friends if love is You can talk about the greats who played the palace. You can talk about the people on Broadway. And to this very day, everyone will say, 
Jules and Jess with Crosby, Canner, Smith and Dale. Burns and Benny with their banter. But what about the girls? Yes, what about the girls? And Ali, Hope and Harris. Durante, George and Cohen. Chevalier from Paris. But what about the girls? Hey, what about the girls? The palace is proud to present the Dolly Sisters.
And I wasn't nervous at all. <laughs> I told you. And you have such a beautiful throat, my dear. Yes. I'm with that for the Lord. Oh, oh stop it, stop it. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, <laughs> it's time, not a girl. Oh, that's a pity. She was so young. Though so everything was heavy. Not if we made you immortal. Blah, blah, blah. From the historic events of the human interest story, keep up with what's happening in the world on the ABC Evening News with Howard K. Smith and Harry Reasoner every weeknight. Eleanor Parker, Bob Cummings, and Louise Jordan star in The Great American Beauty Contest, the Tuesday Movie of the Week on ABC.